Today is August 17th, 2018. The time is 10.51 a.m. This is Agent Kevin Kobach from CBI making a phone call to witness in the Watts matter. Nicole Lee Kessinger at 720-656-9605. Nicole uh, texted me last night and said that she recalled some further information after an interview with her on the 16th. So the phone call will be to update whatever information she wants to provide and address a couple other issues that were not addressed during the initial interview. Hi, Nikki. It's Kevin. Hi. How are you? Sorry. Uh, I'm a sorry for the delay. I got stuck in a meeting. Obviously, uh, couldn't walk out. So I apologize for taking so long to get back to you. Okay. You at least got a couple hours of sleep last night. Yes. You, you sound a little bit better than yesterday. I feel a little bit better. Not much, but I feel like sitting down and just talking about all of that with everybody is like uh, helping good well i think just keep that up and again if you need any if you if i can put you in touch with somebody from a victim advocate to whatever i can help you with just call and ask okay okay um, i'm gonna need you to do that once we're done talking okay sure i can get somebody in touch with you today um, and you don't need to tell me about anything. We talked about that yesterday, but it might be something good for you to do, and, and I can make that happen today. Thank you. You're welcome. So what you texted me about 2 a.m. and said that you uh, remembered some other information. What did you remember? Like just kind of odds and ends, um, and I'm sure there will be more as this goes on. I just I interacted with him so much that sometimes, like, I just have to stop and think about how much information that I have gotten from him over the last few months and the last week or so. And, you know, like I said, I never know what's true and what's not anymore. Sure. But I figure I'll just give you guys everything I have. And hopefully I don't have to keep calling you back with more, but no promises. No, that's um, okay. Please do. I Like I told you yesterday, anything that comes to mind that you think is important, I'd like to know. Because you, again, you know him better than anybody probably over the last six to eight weeks. So that's that's anything that he said to you or anything that stands out to you as you're reflecting on all this um, kind of mess here is important for me to know. Understood. A um, couple things. So one, I went back and I tried to like find whatever text you were talking about between my friend Charlotte and me with the e harmony thing, and I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Um, if you and I, I mean, her and I text so much though. So like, if you find it and you show it to me, let me know. But it's just like, I mean, I was on that site, but it was never like worth a damn for me. Sure. So it wasn't really something that I ever like discussed with her. However. When I was going back through there, I did realize that I had, like, offhandedly mentioned to her a little bit about Chris. I didn't tell her that I was, like, how deep the rabbit hole went on that, I guess you could say. But it was kind of vague, and she was asking a lot of questions at that point. But it was just like, oh, you know what? I did say something to her. You guys, I think um, I just looked at the, the messages. And it, there was some, like, little bit of conversation regarding, yeah, he's got kids. Um, there was some conversations about some sexual-related stuff, and that was about it. Does that sound right? Yeah, that's it. But, I mean, I did mention it to her. And, honestly, we've talked since then, and I haven't even mentioned him. And that girl's so wrapped up in everything that's going on in her life. Like, I don't even think she realizes what's going on in the news. Okay. I don't even think she's going to connect the dots. Like, I would be <clears throat> surprised. Like, I honestly am convinced that if I don't say a word about it, I bet you she won't even bring him up. Okay. And even if she did, if I was just like, yeah, he's not around anymore in my life, like, I don't even think... I'm not concerned about her. Okay. And the, the only, again, the only concern I had there is there seemed like there was some conversation about a boyfriend. And <clears throat> it doesn't seem like, so you were actually talking to her about Chris, not a boyfriend. <clears throat> uh, 
yeah, I don't, I like, I went back through those texts. I'm like, what is he talking about? <laughs> I don't see anything about eHarmony. I mean, and if and it's in there, maybe it is, and I just missed it. But okay. it's like, no, I don't know. I don't it, know. It's I not mean, all that important. My... It's not all that okay. important. So we can move past that. What, okay. what else? Um, on Monday night, so a couple things. Um, I told you we had been, he had like texted me, and then at the end of the night, we had, he had called, or I had called. I think he called me, but either way, we were on the phone with each other. And like, part of some, at some point when we were on the phone, he was like, he was like, do you want to FaceTime? And I remember I was laying in bed, and I was, and I was just like, you know what? Okay, let me turn on the light. And I remember I turned on the light, and we FaceTimed. And when we FaceTimed, he didn't really say much. Like, it was almost kind of awkward. I don't even know why I didn't think of this earlier, but it was like, it was very short, too. It was super brief. And like, I remember what, what's he was short? Like, what? What, what is short? Like, a couple of minutes or 30 minutes? Oh, no, I thought it was only probably like less than five minutes. I think it was only okay. like a couple of minutes. Okay. And he. I think we we were like talking a little bit, but he like he was laying down on a mattress that didn't have any sheets on it, and um, I was like, okay, so I was thinking like, well, maybe he's like he's in bed. I don't know what's up, but I remember asking him like, where's your sheet, you know? And he's like, he's like, oh, I washed them. And then this is the part I don't remember if this sentence right here came in this FaceTime conversation or if it came in a phone conversation prior to the FaceTime conversation, but regardless, this next sentence came on Monday night, and I'm so sorry that I cannot, like, always remember chronological every little detail. That's of okay. It's understandable. There's so much. Um, but I remember he was saying that he was cleaning the house um, to try to keep busy to take his mind off of things. And this was on the phone. And I didn't, and it was kind of late when he was doing it. And like, I didn't honestly think that much about it originally because that man is always cleaning. Like he's a very, very like organized, meticulous, clean individual. Like he's the type of guy that will like vacuum his whole house one week. And if there's rooms that don't get used, he'd vacuum again the next week just because it's like part of his routine. Okay. So the fact, so the fact that he's like cleaning to kill time and take his mind off things did not seem like a super red flag to me. Um, because I was like, okay, well, that's what he does. He just, like, on his days off, like, he organizes his basement or he, like, cleans his garage. It's just, it's what he does. Okay. And, um, so anyways, so that didn't seem at all, uh, like, the norm for me. But something that just kind of, like, dawned on me last night is he made the comment directly after that. He said, I had to wash the kids' sheets. He was like, they smelled. And I was like, was thinking about that last night, and I'm like, this man keeps that house so clean. That's like the cleanest house I've ever seen. And I'm like, this man keeps that house so clean. Why would his kids' sheets smell bad? And this, and that, you think this was what, Monday night? What time do you think it was Monday night? Oh God, I don't even know. I almost wish you guys would show me my phone. So I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna read home. off your phone calls for Monday and Tuesday, starting. No, it's on Monday. Okay, just, just so tell me on Monday night. Monday night, you guys had um, we talked about um, a phone call yesterday, but you guys had a phone call Monday night. It looks like he called you. It was 48 minutes and 57 seconds. It was at 9:48 p.m. that he called you. Um, so that would take us to about 10.35. And then there's another call on Monday. It's for 51 minutes and 25 seconds, it looks like. I'm not sure, looking at this, who called who, but it looks like you called him. And that was at 11.09 p.m. That lasted 51 minutes, so that takes us to um, midnight. And then there's another phone call where he calls you. So we're now into midnight, you know. Tuesday morning, it's a 30-minute phone call um, that lasts until 12.38 a.m., 
And then after 12.38 a.m., there's a two minute and 44 second phone call that lasts for, or pardon me, that starts at 1.12 a.m. It's two minutes and 44 seconds. So Yeah, so I would almost, this is just me, but I would go get my text messages with him from that night and I would like sync them up to that like time frame because okay. there was texting in between that. So I think what happened is he called me on that first call and then there's that gap between the first call and the second call. In, in that gap, that was when I be FaceTime for a few minutes and that was when I got up out of bed because I was just having trouble sleeping and I was like, I went and did laundry, that's what I did. I went and like, put some clothes, I just put some clothes in the dryer and then I think I called him back. And then we continued to talk. So that little gap right there between those two big phone calls at the very beginning of the night, yes. I mean, not the very beginning of the night, but the like the big, big ones of the, the, the first two. So in between that gap, there's, a, there's like a quick FaceTime. So do you think that two minute and 44 second is the FaceTime? The one at the very end. Yeah. Well, so no, there's, there's, there's. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't even think the FaceTime's on there. Okay. Because the so. FaceTime occurred in between those two big phone calls. That okay. like no. Okay. Because it was so it was like one big phone call, and then there's, and then there should have been there's a FaceTime, and then and in the FaceTime's short. It's only a few minutes, and then there's probably just a few more minutes. There's and that's probably. So there's a few more calls on Tuesday. So 112 is the two minute and 44 second call. That so that lasts till um, approximately 114, and then there's a long gap uh, until 150. So another 45 or 35 minutes, and then there's a seven minute phone call. That phone call lasts yeah. till 158 a.m., and then there's a 10 second phone call at 207 a.m. followed by um, so he, I think he calls you and maybe leaves a voicemail or something or doesn't, you don't pick up. Uh, so there's a 10 second call. And then directly after that, there's a 10 minute and 24 second phone call. Okay. So I'm talking about the two at the very beginning. Of the, the okay. Two the, the, beginning. the two long, the really ones. long ones. And is yeah. that when he's talking so, about the kids? Um, yes, sheets. with the sheet. Okay, so yes, 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 yes. I will help you line this up. Like, I almost want to just come in there and, like, drop and drag all of my texts to where they were going. And you know what? Like, we may meet and do that uh, here coming early next week. Yeah, well, all those phone calls at the very end of the night, that was me freaking out. Like, if you look at my texts, a lot of that was, like, I can't sleep. I'm really scared. Where's your family? That was, like, me freaking out and okay. him calling to, like, try to reassure me or me calling him, like, please talk to me. I'm super scared. Where's your family? Like, those those little ones at the very end of the night are, are me not being able to sleep and trying to get him to, like talk to me about like and just I guess making sure everything was okay so that those those like real late ones and that's why they're all kind of like sporadic because I'd be up for like an hour and then I'd fall asleep for like 15 minutes and then I would like wake up and start stressing again and try to call them back like so that's why they're all these like little sporadic ones throughout okay. the end of the night but those two big ones is it, so yesterday we talked about Tuesday was mainly text messages regarding um, your confrontation about his wife being pregnant. Yeah. Is that accurate? Um, it is. And I okay. mean, I guess I guess those phone calls were on Tuesday morning, but for me, it was still Monday okay. night. So I, I, I was talking it. you guys last night, that's right. how I referred to it, because I hadn't, like, gone to bed yet. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yep. No, that makes sense to me. Okay, so... Okay, so, 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 he, so I guess those technically were on Tuesday, but according to my daily sleep schedule, that was still my Monday night. Right. So the last phone call... Um, with him on Monday, well, it, it's, it, it basically starts into Tuesday. Um, it takes you all the way to Tuesday. It actually okay. ends, like, basically at midnight on Monday, August 31st. So okay. um, his wife gets home sometime at about 2 o'clock on um, that morning. So no, she got home on Sunday. Pardon me, she Sunday. Sunday. She got home on Sunday. So, did you ever talk to him late on Sunday night? 
No, we were on the phone, but I mean, I, I had to let him go and get up and go to work. That was so the 9 to 11 call that we, it was like a two-hour phone call we talked about yesterday on Sunday night from 9 p.m. to 11. And that would have been the last time that I talked to him until the work day on Monday. And that's when he texted you at like 345. No, we talked during work. Remember I told you he like randomly texted me throughout the day at work, but it was like, it was just like bullshit conversation. Okay. It wasn't like anything. Of no no sustenance. Okay. So the, the most important thing that you've said here is this Monday night phone call, um, he doesn't have any sheets on the bed, and he said his children's sheets were smelly. They smell. Okay. Yeah, so let's, let's get back to that, because I feel like you and me are kind of getting off track. Yep. So go to those, those, those that, that first long phone call on Monday night was, I think, when he told me that. I don't think he told me that in the FaceTime text. I mean, in the FaceTime conversation, I think he told me that in the first conversation, where he was like, they're sheets now. And I remember thinking to myself, like, why? Like, you keep such a clean house. Like, why would your kids sheep stink? And, like, it just didn't really click. Did, and then did you confront night, him? Yeah, was, why they... What's up? Did you confront him why the sheep smelled, or did you inquire why? No, 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 no. I didn't even ask. Do, do you know his... That. I mean, uh, his children were quite young, and I think one of them was still in diapers. Um, would, would have that been a potential reason... You know that one of them had an accident, or did it seem like that's not what he was talking about? I don't know. I mean, he didn't elaborate. Okay. He was just like, I mean, like I said, he always cleans the house. But even if his kids were to be in diapers and like have accidents, like I just feel like the man keeps his house so clean, and she does too. They both must have to to like coexist in a house that clean. But like, I just don't see anything in the house like smelling. Okay. All right. So that was why I brought that up because I was like, whoa. Okay. Very important. Um, Thanks for remembering that. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm really trying to help you guys. I just, I need you guys to help me too. Like, yes, ma'am. This is a team, but just don't. <laughs> so the, down, the reason I, why um, we can't, like, I do, I think, uh, I did think about this yesterday that I would like to sit down with you once we um, have your text messages and the phone calls and we can put them in a, uh, some type of, easily looking that we can sit down and look at them and compare them and we can kind of get the context of how everything was going that night i would like to do that with you unfortunately so the download that we got yesterday is going to take uh, multiple days to be analyzed i probably won't have it back till next week and then because you guys did have so many um, text messages uh, there is one of my analysts is working on getting those in order so we can put something together where we can actually sit down and discuss it. But I do think that's something that we would, I want to do in the near future, sometime probably next week. I mean, I can do that. I don't mind giving you guys my time. I just need you guys to like help me with my employer and try to just help me brace for this media thing and just try. So to I think your personal help mental health is the number one issue. So let me help you with that and get in a victim advocate to call you. Um, and you can address questions of employment with them. I think they're better suited to answer those questions than I am. Um, so I, I would ask you to direct questions to them. If they can't answer them, um, I'll try to help you as best as I can. I think you have a personal decision to make on what you want to do with your employer. Um, I think you're, you're kind of backed into a corner. Um, and and you are gonna. It's a tough decision. Do you want to inform them of what was going on? But um, I will tell you that I think that when they started looking at information for us, um, and I clarified this this morning because I didn't do some of the work on this, but there was either text messages or emails between you and Chris that were on, text. Yeah, that were on company related phones or on company company related computers that um, they were privileged to look at. So they already know about you. Okay, so... Yeah, I just, I don't know if I'm going to keep my job. I hope that they don't fire me for that. I mean, technically, I'm not an APC employee, and he is, and it was his phone and not mine, so, well, like, I, don't, I, I don't, think... I don't think that's fire... Like, I, I don't know labor law. I'll just put it that way. I think that, you know, whatever. I mean, people have relationships at work, and you guys were smart enough to stop the stuff, uh, however you guys did it. Do, is it an unusual circumstance that two people who got together at their 
place of employment, this terrible tragedy happened. Yes. Do I think that they are going to do anything to you? I don't think so. I mean, if you read the paper today, you saw they already fired Chris. I mean, that, oh yeah, that, well, as they should, that, but <laughs> right. I'm hoping they're not going to fire me. Well, and I think you need to head that up. Um, I think if it was me, and this is just a personal, this is not a professional opinion, it's a personal opinion, because I'm trying to help you as much as I can. I would I would reach out to your employer and just say, I want to come and talk to you. But maybe talk to these, talk to your EAP people first, and let me get you in touch with a victim advocate. Because, again, I think your mental health is more important right now than even your employment. I want you to make sure that you're comfortable and safe in everything that's happening, and then make some, uh, you know, professional professional decisions and in in regards to your employment okay okay so um, let me yeah, do that and we can uh, we can I, go ahead no i have a couple more questions that don't relate to anything that we just talked about is there anything else that you remembered last night that you want to address yeah a few so um i'm not done yet okay um, and then um and then we can talk about that whole thing, too, because I was actually going to see if I could email them today. I was going to email my, like, upper, upper boss, and, and I was actually going to call her and see and just ask her if she can have, she's an Anadarko rep, see if she can have a schedule sit down with my employer, Tasman, and schedule sit down with EAP, and I want to get in a room with them all at the same time and just give them kind of a brief synopsis of what's going on and just ask them for help and see what they have to say, yeah. but I was going to... I think Tell that's you a good plan. Say to them and just ask your opinion on it because I don't want to give them too much. You do not need to tell them anything about the investigation or anything about what we discussed. Um, from my standpoint, the investigative pieces that we've talked about and um, specifically things that relate directly to um, why something may have happened or time frames or things like that, they don't need to know that. I think... Oh, I wasn't going to tell them that. I was yeah. just going to let them know I, that I was... You were in a relationship with, this with him. Case ...and that, I yes. was, that I'm like a witness to this case and that right now it's pretty quiet, but, you know, in a few weeks, given how everything goes, it might become kind of a media frenzy and I was just going to tell him like you know I mean I didn't commit any crimes and <clears throat> I'm not in trouble but right. I'm working with the prosecutor to try to help to bring some closure to this horrible thing and then just tell them like you know I just I don't think the media is going to portray a very nice picture of me and it's just an unfortunate circumstance and I, you know. I think that your projection of whatever is going to happen to them with the media can be reserved until that time. I don't think, I know that's like your biggest fear in this, but right now I would not even address, I wouldn't address anything that hasn't happened. I think I would simply tell them, look, I, I am involved in this case, I'm a witness, and, and I, you know, whether or not I think they already know, it, and I'm sure Andarco is going to talk with whoever your employer is to make them aware of that. And then, hey, I had a relationship with this guy, and that's all they need to know. They don't need to know anything else. Um, and, and then, I mean, you have to protect your, um, your employment and, and your personal well-being. So think of the best way to do that and just minimal information. You don't have to tell them very much. But I do think you're uh, on the right track of getting ahead of it. Uh, but, again, I, I can't, I'm not an attorney, especially a labor attorney. So you, you have to make decisions for yourself on that. But the, some of the people um, here in the victim advocate realm may be able to give you some better advice uh, than, than I. I was hoping to do that today. Sure. I will make a phone call to today. Like and get, get um, the ball rolling on this yep. because I would like to either go to work on Monday or, like, figure yep. out what is going yeah. on with, like, a fresh week and, like, try to put my yep. life together because I think it will help. Yeah. I think getting back to work and not sitting there and dwelling on this at every moment is going to be very beneficial to you. So I, I will reach out to those people who handle that today. I, if I had a name, I'd give it to you. I don't. Um, <clears throat> but I'll see who's available. Okay? So okay. what so other... I, I want to reach out to them today. Okay. That, that, I'll, I, as soon as we're done here, I'll, I'll make that my next priority. Thank you. What, what other things is there that um, you thought of last night? <clears throat> oh, um, so... I don't know when this phone conversation happened. I think that this was 
Monday at some point as well. I think it might have even been the same phone conversation as him washing the sheets and everything. Um, he, I think it might have been the same conversation. Um, he informed me that her friend Nikki's son uh, was at the house when the cops came and that he was running all over the house and up and down in all the rooms. And at this point, I was like, well, is anything missing? Because I was thinking on Monday that this girl had just left for the night. So I was like, well, maybe if she's staying with Nikki or somebody, maybe she forgot some stuff. So maybe they're sending, you know, they're like sending him in, like, hey, go get a toothbrush or go get this or go get that. Like, I didn't, I didn't know. And so he's like, yeah, this little kid was like running all over my house and in all the different rooms in the house. And I was like, well, is anything missing? And he was like, he was like, well, there, I think there's some blankets missing from my kids' rooms, but I don't think he took them. I think she did. Okay. So he said, little kid, do you know how old this man was or boy was? Oh, Nikki's son? I don't know. Okay. I think he's like 10 or 12. Like, I think he's like a, like a, yeah, I don't know. I think he's like 10 or 12. Like, old enough to, like, process information and run around the house. So he said he thought that the kid didn't take him, but that maybe um, Shanann had taken him. Yes. That's a uh, weird, okay. So Nikki Sonny's like 10 to 12, and... Um, I'm just making some notes, just a sec. Take your time. Okay. What else? Oh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Um, I don't know. I feel like I have a list in my head, and I almost wrote it out. But so, it how about this? And I was going to mention this last night, but I think both of us were pretty tired, um, and we were we were there for a long time yesterday. So, if you have a thought, keep a notepad and a pen and paper with you, and write it down, and then that way you don't lose it. That that way, you, and then you can just call me, and we can discuss it, and and we're done, um, and then move on. Then you don't have to think about it anymore. Is that sound like a decent idea? It does. Okay. I don't know what else I was going to tell you. Oh, well, oh, when we FaceTime, too. So let me go back to that, too. So okay. I think all of this was on Monday. So I think the, both the comments about the blankets and the sheets were on that first phone call on Monday. And then directly after that phone call, there was, like, a brief FaceTime. And when I FaceTimed him, he was, like, he was laying on a bed that didn't have any sheets on it. Okay. And I remember, and he was like in, um, just like, like, a, like a little wife beater top, and he didn't really say much. It was like he wanted me to talk to him. He was like, I just wanted to see your face. And he like wanted me to talk to him, but he was like kind of quiet. And actually, that was why I got off the phone with him and went and did laundry. And then so I would call him back on the phone because when we were FaceTiming, it was like kind of weird. I was like, uh, I don't really know where this is going. Like, you're not really having a conversation with me. So like, he was just removed. He, he wasn't very engaged in the conversation. He was just like really fixated on like, me like I bet you if I wouldn't have talked he would have been okay with it just staring at you yeah I mean it was just like it was really brief too like it was so, super short and I was just like this is not going anywhere and I remember telling him like I will call you back but let me go do some laundry so I like got out of bed and went and threw some clothes in the dryer that I had forgot to put in the dryer prior to laying down and then um I don't know, I think I might have did like one or two other little quick things, and then I got back in bed and then called him back on the phone, and that's when that second long phone call starts. Okay. All right, great. Anything else? Um, off the top of my head, I don't 
I don't really think so. I mean, I did want to make a comment, too, though. Like, um, the other gentleman that was in the room last night, I do not remember his name. His name was Tim? Uh, Tim, that's right. I knew it started with a T, and I couldn't remember <laughs> that. Um, he was asking me, like, oh, did you guys ever talk about my plan, stuff like that? And here's the deal. Like, when it comes to Chris or any other man that I've ever had in my life, like, I always discuss important things, like, like, where do you want to be in five years? Like, you know, the, are these, the, is this the type of man that wants to have kids? And in his case, more kids. Like, are you, like, what type of house do you want to live in? Like, Hello? Hi, Nikki. It's Kevin. Hi, Kevin. How are you? I'm okay. All right. <clears throat> um, can you, I, I'm running a recorder so you know. Um, okay. I, I just want you to introduce yourself again for the tape recorder. Just say your legal name for me, and then we'll get started. Okay. Okay. It's Nicole Lee Kessinger. And your birthday, Nicole? July 3rd, 1988. And you go by Nikki, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. All righty. So <clears throat> you texted me this morning. We had a brief conversation regarding some new information that you remembered uh, from just reflecting on what's been going on with this case. So yes. you want to start with that? So you did you write some things down? I did. So okay. they're kind of out of order. They kind of just are as they came to my head. Sure. Um, so we'll go over them in the order that I wrote them down. That's fine. Um, so I was thinking about the whole, um, uh, what is the, the name of the, the stuff she sold for LaBelle? Um, Thrive. The, uh, I'm sorry? Thrive. Thrive, that's right. I was like, it starts with a T and I'm trying to blank. So I started thinking about this whole Thrive thing because I remember that we spoke uh, la at the end of last week and you were asking what I thought of it and I made it clear that I just, I didn't understand it. Um, and the reason I had a hard time understanding it was because I didn't understand how people who were living sedentary lifestyles and had poor diets were losing so much weight on this, on this program. And Chris was never able to tell me what was in it. Like he always, he not always, but when we first met, he was like, you should try this stuff. You should try this stuff. And I never, I never wanted to, I was uncomfortable with it because I didn't know what it was. Um, and I even had looked on their website and I still didn't completely understand it. And so I just kind of, I stayed away from that. And not only that, I mean, he told me, you know, the only things he pretty much told me is it gives you energy and it's like a weight loss supplement. And I'm not trying to lose any weight. Like I don't need that. And I didn't feel like I needed the energy either. So he never pushed it again. And I never, I never, like he always wore the Thrive patches and I never questioned it. It was like what he did. Um, but one thing I do remember him mentioning to me when he first tried to introduce me to Thrive was that you needed one patch a day. Um, and when he would hang out with me, he always wore two, always wore two. Okay. Um, and I don't know- Do you remember he where, he, up on where he wore them? Yeah, so he would usually wear one on, like, his left tricep, bicep area, and then sometimes he would wear another one on the right side in the same spot, or he would wear it on his, like, lower back. Okay. Um, but he always had two, and I remember thinking, like, I thought you only need one of these, why are you using two? And I never I never questioned it because for me, I mean, like I never questioned him about it because to me, I just felt like since I wasn't involved with that program and I didn't want to be involved, it wasn't really my my position to 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 question him. Sure. Um, and now I know that there's also supplements that go with it. There's like a pill and, and like a morning shaker. There's like a lot of stuff that goes with it, but there's like a daily routine of like three or four items that you are supposed to take. Now, was he doubling up on those other items? I am not sure. I was do he not know that. Do you know if he was following the complete routine? Um, as far as I know, he was following it. And he had told me that that is why he lost a bunch of weight. He said that the reason he lost so much weight was 
all because of Thrive. And then he said that at some point a few months ago, he had started getting stagnant with the weight loss. And so that is when he decided that he was going to start working out again. And that's when he decided he wanted to start eating healthy as well because he was realizing that he'd like plateaued and he, he still wanted to continue with his fitness. But I think he was realizing like maybe a diet, like a healthy diet and exercise is what I need at this point. So that was the avenue that he was starting to go down and he'd been going down by the time I met him. Um, but he was still doing the thrive on top of it. Okay. So the thing that caught my yeah, so the thing that caught my attention about this recently when I was thinking about it is the fact that um, I think maybe the reason he was doing the two a days and this is just speculation is because it had like plateaued. So maybe he was doubling up because he thought it had plateaued. So the reason that this comes to my attention is because of his weight loss. So um, he lost 13 pounds in about five weeks. In fact, I can give you the dates. He lost 13 pounds from July 4th to August 11th is how much weight he lost. Because August 4th, I mean, July 4th was the day that I went to his house and sat down with him and asked him, how much do you weigh? And he asked me, can you just like look at my macros and see how much protein people my size that usually eat and all that and just asked me to like glance at it. So that's why I went over there. So that's like, when you say his house, that's his house in Frederick that he uh, shared yeah. with Shanann. Yes, that's okay. the one that I told you guys I right. went to on the 4th. And that was why I went there was to, to sit down with him that morning of the 4th and just discuss his goals, you know, and again, I'm not a fitness trainer, so he already had a, his, an idea in mind. He was just asking me, like, can you just glance at this and tell me what you think since you pay such close right. attention to these things. So anyways, um, so we, uh, I'm going to ask you, I think I already asked you and we discussed this once, but July 4th was the first time you went to his house. And then I think you yeah. said like the following Monday or Sunday was the, the final, the second and final time you'd been to his home. We'll have to, it was a Saturday, and I'll have to look it up. It was either the Saturday, it was, hold on, let me pull out a calendar. I really just want to, like, uh, that's July. Yeah, that's July. Yeah, so July 4th, and then that we can I think, I think, and I will double check this, but I'm pretty sure, I know for a fact I was at his house on July 4th, mm -hmm. and I think the second time I went to his house, was Saturday the fourteenth. Okay, and and you those are if I remember right, you only had been there two times, right? Yeah, like I didn't want to go back after that second time that I was there. It was like I don't want to be at this house. Like if you want to hang out, come to my house. So so yeah, so the fourteenth was the last time I was there. Okay. Great. Um, but back to this. So the the thrive thing. So I, <clears throat> I was I was like kind of concerned that he was losing so much weight. Um, but I also wasn't because he was like kind of fine tuning his diet, but it was enough for me to look at it. Um, because I was like, well, I mean, it, it wasn't like a, a, a severe weight loss, but it was, it was kind of fast. So I was like, okay, well, are you getting enough calories? What's going on? And I couldn't figure it out because I was looking at what he was eating and it was like healthy proteins and vegetables and, and he was eating a decent amount of food and I'm just like, how is this man losing so much weight? And then I started thinking about it the other day and I'm like, oh my God, it's because he was like doubling up on all the Thrive stuff and he was starting to eat really healthy. So that, I think, is So did you see a change in him personally during that time from July 4th, or pardon me, July, yeah, July 4th to August 11th when he lost that kind of weight? What did you say? What was the question you did, were asking? Did you that? did you see a lot of change in him? Like, uh, not physical change, but was his personality different, or was it just the weight loss? No, it was just the weight loss. Like, okay. I didn't think he was any different. But this is the one thing that I wanted to point out to you guys was that he was always this way. I just want to state that right now. Like, this was not something that started at any certain point. But from the first time that we started hanging out, he always had a re 
ridiculous amount of energy. And it wasn't that he was like super high strung and bouncing off the walls. It was that he could stay up. He like didn't need to sleep. And he was always that way. Like when we would hang out, he, oh my God, I would try to get him to go to bed at like 10 o'clock every night. I'm like, if you're gonna stay here, you need to go to bed at like 10 because I have to get up and go to work in the morning and so do you. And he, he would keep me up like every night. And we usually, I would say, I mean, it kind of fluctuated, but typically I would say that we went to bed somewhere when he stayed the night at my house on those nights, somewhere between 11 o'clock and midnight every night. And it used to bug me because it was like, I was so tired. I'm what time like, did you wake? Go to bed. What, time, what time did you usually wake up? Um, it kind of depended on the day and what I had going on at work, but I would say in between 4.30 and 5 is like a pretty accurate assumption of when I'm supposed to get up for work. Okay. All right. So, I mean, and then so what I would do is I would go to work all day, and then when I would get off work, I would sleep. I would go home and nap, and I would, and my naps varied in time. Sometimes it was a half an hour, sometimes it was like an hour and a half. It was like whatever my body needed, and then I would get up, and I would go to the gym, and then after I got back from the gym, he would come over my house, and it would be the same thing where it was like he would keep me up, and I will tell you, without those naps, there's no way I would have been able to keep up with him. No okay. way. And and then and another thing about that too, and he was always like that, always. And and it used to he I could tell like his body wanted to sleep, but like his mind couldn't sleep. And the reason that I say that is because he he sometimes I would see him like he would keep me up so I'd be like all right well like let's watch a movie you know uh, if you want to hang out and so we'd be up and I'd see him like doze off and then like wake right back up and like doze off and wake right back up okay. and there was a few times there was a few times that we were having a conversation and he would be talking to me ah, Kevin he would like fall asleep mid-sentence and okay. wake up like snap yeah, and he would, like, snap out of it, like, five or ten seconds later and keep talking right where he left off. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, it always, like, blew my mind. I was like, this guy must really like me if he is, like, avoiding sleep to be with me. <laughs> and it was like, I just, I couldn't do it. Like, I napped probably almost every single day right. after I hung out with him. Right. Okay. I so get so I get honestly it was almost it so, was like he was on speed. So you think the thrive thing contributed to that or at least his own drive for losing weight and getting in shape and maybe his um attraction to you um drove him because you're pretty physically fit and he was kind of motivated by that. I think we remember you saying that earlier um that you were trying to help him get in better shape. I mean, he was already in good physical shape, and he was already taking care of his health and his diet in the gym. I just think he was like, hey, since you're already in this like, live a healthy lifestyle, uh, would you be willing to just give me some input? Maybe okay. I can fine tune it. You but do you I think that was some of the motivation for him to uh, stay awake uh, long hours and, um, you know, use maybe multiple patches of Thrive? to try to impress you, for lack of better terms? No, I think it was the thrive, and I think his body wanted to sleep. I think it really wanted to sleep. I think he legitimately was trying to lose weight, and I think that's what was keeping okay. him up. Cool. Because at the end of the day, like, I wanted to sleep, but he just was, like, really restless and didn't seem like he wanted to, but he always seemed, like, really respectful of my wishes, so you would think that he would be on board with that, but it was almost like he, like, couldn't calm his brain, you know? And mm -hmm. like I said, he wasn't acting high energy. He just, like, wouldn't sleep, and I almost think that's what it was. It was almost restless where it's like, hey, I can't turn off at the end of the night. Stay up with me, and he never said that, but that was kind of the impression that I got. Okay. And so, and again, the double thrive patches, I mean, maybe, but I don't really think he was trying to impress me. I mean, he told me, like, I had plateaued on this stuff. So I think maybe he was like, well, what if I double dip? Mm -hmm. So Right, so he's trying I'm to do it sure. over. I get it. Okay. Yeah, so I don't, I don't think that was a, a needy motivated thing for him. I think that was, he, because he was already working on the thrive thing. And like I said, in his fitness, he was doing all that prior to me being in his life. Okay.
So, and, and so, and I don't know if he was double patching before I met him. He double patched the whole time I knew him. So I don't know if like that occurred once I came into his life or if he had already started doing that once he pled. I never right. asked. Okay. All I right. just found that really interesting. So yeah. I just wanted to bring that yeah, up. Yeah, and I appreciate it. And you're, that's the kind of yeah. things that I want, uh, when we talked prior, uh, just to re- get you to recall things that didn't seem out of place then, that, but when you reflect back, may have seemed out of place now with what you know. So, what's I, next? I mean, it was scary to me. Like, it was scary that he lost that much weight on that stuff, but I guess a lot of people do, and I keep thinking about no, it. I'm mean, like, it almost seems like it's a drug. If you look at any diet, though, I mean... I, I'm not a fitness guy, but if you read about Atkins or any of these other diets, people lose excessive amounts of weights in short periods of time. So, um, yeah. yeah, but whatever. I, I think it's interesting that uh, this Thrive played a part in it. Um, and quite frankly, I, I am going to get one of these patches uh, to try to figure out what it is. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out um, at some point. So, okay. what's next on your list? Um, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Um, oh, okay. So, this is Saturday. So, this Saturday would have this been... This is Saturday, the 11th of August. Okay. Was that the 11th? Yep. Okay. This is the night that we attempted to go to the Lazy Dog on 120th and Federal, and we walked in, and... I looked at their menu, they like tried to feed us, and I looked at their menu, and I was like, I'm not eating here. Right. Um, and because, yeah, so we went to the other Lazy Dog, which is actually owned by somebody else, so they have a different menu. So we went to the Lazy Dog off of, I think it's 144 that I told you guys, and we sat down and we ate. And we it's, were it's on Highway 7, dog. right? What's up? Is it on Highway 7? Mm, I don't think so. It's on I-25 and like 144. Okay. I mean, I can look it up. No, and that's okay. Screenshot it I think uh, um, there's two of them, and I think there was some confusion. One of our guys went, and I just want to make sure he went to the right one. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know the lazy dog, but I'll ask him tomorrow. 144th is right me. by Highway Seven. Okay. Well, I, I don't know that. I don't know. Yeah. I, just, I had never been to that one, so. Um, I think it's 144th. It might be 136th. I will look it up tonight, and I okay. will screenshot you the address, and I will send it so that you guys, if you guys need to pull those videos, you can okay. find it. Um, but one thing that I noticed about this is that, um, so normally when we went out, um, I try to keep things pretty cheap just to be, like, respectful. Like, I never went to, like, expensive places or anything, and sometimes I would pay for things, sometimes he would, but when he paid... He would always use these, like, Anna Darko gift cards, um, like these little gray gift cards. And they were always, like, $25 or $50, and they always came in, like, like denominational increments that made sense. And he told me that he got these from Anna Darko as rewards for, like, doing really good stuff at work. And... Is that true? I don't know. I don't know if, I mean, I know that him and his wife had a lot of financial issues, so I don't know if maybe he's the one who actually wanted to spend all the money and maybe he was cashing his paycheck in via gift cards so that his wife couldn't track it. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't know. But I think it's something you guys will need so to confirm with So were Anna they Darko. actually in the name of Anna Darko? Did- do you remember, or did he just tell you they, that they, they were different? No, 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 I've seen them. They okay. have Anna Darko on them. They're like little sil- dark silver, like, credit cards, but they're like gift cards. So um, you're, you're just suspicious that potentially he was hiding money from his wife with these gift cards? Honestly, no. I think Anna Darko legitimately gave him these. The oil industry is pretty good about when our operators do things that are safe. Um or they do a really good job at something. Um, they they uh, they usually provide like gift cards or some sort of incentive for it. Just the so they bonus the these guys out if they're doing a good job or being extra like they have no safety violations and stuff. Yeah, 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 stuff like that. So it's like they're like safety rewards. So, okay. Um, 
Yeah, so so do I think they were legitimate? Honestly, yes. I, I, I do. That's something you need to confirm with Anna Darko, though, because I wasn't one of their employees, so I don't know. Okay. Um, but I did think to myself, like, if they do have money issues, maybe he was possibly concealing it. But the thing, it's not even the gift cards, I think, that are, like, the main focus on this right now. For me, the main focus that I wanted to bring to you guys' attention is he always paid with those. Always. And Every then, time you oh, guys... Night, so you you we talked about this um prior and let's just revisit it um you guys never really went out on a date per se with the exception of this saturday night on the 11th usually you guys spent time at your home um versus going out unless i'm mistaken on what you're saying you are i okay so we on most nights would hang out at my house, but we went out a few times. And I have dates for everything, and okay. I can give you that once yeah. I'm done with this. Um, so um, the reason that this caught my attention was not because of the gift cards. It was the lack of the gift cards. So when we went out to dinner, he went to pay the check. And I noticed that instead of using one of the Anadarko gift cards, he had a baby blue credit card in his hand that he used to pay. Okay. And I just remember thinking to myself, like, why isn't he using any of those gift cards? I'm pretty sure he still has a balance on one of those, but I couldn't remember. And then I was just like, I was like, maybe, because, you know, at this point, at this point, he had made it clear to me that they were, like, filing for divorce. Like, it was, like, done. So I was like, well, maybe... He just doesn't really care anymore, you know? And But then another part of me was like, but technically, they're still together, so why would he do that? And, like, I just, I didn't ask, because, like, at, he had made it sound like by that Saturday that they were so far removed from each other that I was like, it's plausible that now he's just not, like, has nothing to cover up, you know? But then at the same time, I still feel like, until your divorce is 100% completely final and you're out of that house, why would you do that? Sure. I mean, so again, I didn't So you just found it was a little bit suspicious um, that he used a credit card versus the, um, the gift card. It was like he had nothing to hide. Right. Or nothing to lose. He, he was just like, yeah, I'm going to pay with this right. and I don't care. Okay. So, and that would certainly be... Uh, if it was a credit card, uh, just thinking uh, would be something that maybe his wife would see at some point and he would have yes. to then try to have to explain that. So in your mind, he's like, oh, well, we're divorced or I don't care anymore. Um, she's going to find out that I have a, uh, a girlfriend. I don't really know what he was thinking. I mean, I can't think for that man. I mean, I, I don't even, I can't even process half the shit he's done or the lies he's told at this point, so I don't know. I just think that that was extremely peculiar because he had never done that before, okay. and it didn't seem like a big deal to him. All right. I, I get what, where you're going. Um, so it kind of made you think that he didn't have anything to hide anymore. No, not at all. And again, you know, I mean, there was other parts of our relationship where it's like he talked to me on the phone pretty freely, like all the time, you know. So for me, like he never really seen it never really seemed like on the phone, like he had to hide anything at all. And that's why, you know, when he's telling me, yeah, we're getting separated. Yeah, I'm sleeping in the basement. Like it didn't even like occur to me, like maybe this isn't happening because it was like he was so liberal about his communication with me even if they were in the same house together at the same time and so for me I was like all right well maybe she's upstairs he's downstairs they're separated it doesn't really matter if he makes a phone call and so that he was always liberal with but when it came to like paying for things it was always the Anna Darko gift cards and mm -hmm. again like I don't know if that's because he was hiding it from her or if that was because he happened to have these gift cards and why not spend those as opposed to like the money in your bank account i mean i don't know i just noticed that that one last time that we hung out that he paid with a credit card and i was confused because i was pretty sure that he still had a balance remaining on like one of those anadarko cards but i i okay i don't know Got it. i don't know 
All right. What's so, next? All right. And then um, well, let me just give you a real quick. Sure. Um, for the things when we were out in public. So I think I have these right. I hope I have these right. Um, but on Sunday, I think it was Sunday. I think it was Sunday the 5th. I think. July 5th? Um, yeah, that's what I meant. I'm sorry. I'm glad that you're paying attention to this. <laughs> yeah. So July, I think July, I'm going to start at the beginning. Okay. So I went out of town for my birthday. I came home on July 3rd, which is the night of my birthday. On the 4th of July, I went over his house in the morning and then, and helped him with his like meal plan thing. And then after that, I went to the 4th of July Rockies game with one of my friends. And then on the 5th, I think it was the 5th, I don't remember, um, we went to go see a movie. Um, and we went to the movie theater that is up by that lazy dog, I think, on 144th and I-25. Um, what movie did you see? see? That new Jurassic Park movie. I don't know what it's called. Okay. And I remember um, we got there... And the first showing was sold out, I think. I don't remember. I think either we were going to go see another movie and it was sold out or that one was sold out. So but when we went up there to start with, it was sold out. And so we we left and we, um, we went and, like, walked down to these benches that were, like, right across from the Victoria's Secret um, and I don't know what corner of the building that would be on. Um, if you guys need me to go up there and try to figure it out, no, I can we'll, do I'll that. figure it out. That's um, okay. Yeah, and we like sat in these benches on this bench under this tree and like just bullshitted until the next showing of the movie. Um, and then we went to the second showing of the movie, and it was really late. I want to say it was uh, like nine something p.m. On, yeah, it on was late. Fifth. And I want to say I don't. I I just I just don't even want to say it's Sunday because I feel like it was like not Sunday. I don't think it was my birthday though. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I might have all my dates mixed up. If I have all my dates mixed up, just that's okay. That you get, you're getting us close. You, you'll <laughs> find it. Okay. So then, um, let me go back to. I was looking at August. That's why the date the date sounded weird. It was it was like it was either the sixth of July or the seventh of July. Okay. I was looking at the wrong one. So Sunday the sixth. Pardon me. No, it's it's. It, I think because that's what I'm saying. I didn't think it was a Sunday. So it is either Friday the sixth. Okay. Or Saturday the seventh. Of July. I'm sorry. I was That's okay. the wrong calendar. Um, so one of the, well, because I remember that was like our first, like, outing. That was like our first date, and it was the weekend right after my birthday week. Okay. So, um, so it had to have been, yeah, either probably the 6th or the 7th. And okay. then we didn't go anywhere again until the next weekend. And that weekend on Saturday the 14th, that's the day that I went to his house, um, we went up to Boulder and we went to the Shelby Mustang Museum. So this was July 14th. Okay. Yeah. So we went up there, took a tour, and then um, after that, we left. And um, Do you remember what we time that would have been? That we left? Mm hmm I don't know. Well, it what time do you think you got late. to the museum? Oh, God. I don't even remember. Um, morning, afternoon, night? I think it was pretty, like, decent time in the morning. I bet you we got there at, like, 11 or so. Because I remember it took us probably, like, an hour, an hour and a half to walk through it. I think it was it's a small museum. And then after that, we were going to go to lunch in Boulder. And then we decided not to. And then um, 
we just went to we went to his house, and I dropped him off because I had picked him up to go to the museum. So, so I you're dropped him off at. You're driving your forerunner. Yeah, we we drove my forerunner all the time. I told you I was only in his vehicle one time, and I right. think it was like so he could go get gas or something. Like everything, all of these adventures were all done in my truck. Okay. Uh, um. So then uh, we went to his house, and um. We were over there for a little while, but then I was just like, I don't really want to be here. So I left, and I left him there. He didn't go with me. At his home? Um, yeah, like I left him there. Okay. Um, and I left by myself. And then um, the weekend of the 21st, and this is how you'll know if my dates are lined up. I would base it off of this date and work your way backwards. But like... Um, this weekend, I went to Bandemir Speedway with him, and I went and saw, I think it was called the Mopar Mile High National. Mm -hmm. It might have been called Thunder on the Mountain. I don't know. It was the drag races, though. And it was, um, yeah, Saturday the 21st. Okay. And we were there, like, the majority of the day. I think, I think we got there, like early afternoon and we were there till it ended pretty much was that uh late in the evening yeah those things go pretty late like it gets dark <clears throat> okay so you guys so you drove did you pick him up again and then drive your truck or, or your forerunner right it's a forerunner Drive your four I didn't pick him up. No, I didn't, I didn't pick him up again because I never went back to his house. Like, he came to my house and then we carpooled. Okay. So he drove to your house. You guys carpooled down to the Mile High Nationals and you stay the majority of the day. Is there anybody with yep. you guys on any of these dates or is it just you two? It's just us. Okay. <clears throat> Did you um, have meals anywhere after you left there? Did you stop at any bars or anything? God. Um, okay, so that day, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, prior to going to uh, Bandemir, we went to, um, what is the name of that little town? It's not Evergreen. It's like in between Lake Wood and Morrison. Morrison, We went to okay. Morrison. And there's a patio bar there. Um, I do not know what it is called. It's on top of an Italian pizza place. I think it's literally called like the Morrison Grill or Morrison Patio Bar, like something real simple. Um, and we went, it's, it's just like a rooftop bar. Um, and you went and before the, the drag races? Yeah, we went before the drag races. Okay. And we hung out, yeah, and we hung out there probably for a while. I think we were there for a little while. We ate there, so that's where we got So food. you, you ate lunch there? Yeah, we did. Okay. Tacos. Okay. Uh, um, this is a really good bar, by the way. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we, 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 um, we did that, and then we went to Bandemir, and then I don't know what we did after Bandemir. I think we just went to my house. I'm almost positive. Like, I don't think we did anything after that, because it was pretty late. Okay. And then on the weekend of... July 28th through the 29th, um, we went to the sand dunes. We went to the Great Sand Dunes National Park. Down in uh, Alamosa? Yes. July 28th, 29th. Did you guys stay anywhere? What did you say? I'm sorry. Where, did, where did you say? Oh, we camped. Okay. We camped. I don't remember the name of the campsite, but if you... Like, just let me go through probably, like, my old phone Navo or, like, go through just the Internet and try to look up campsites. I can probably come up with a name for you. Well, let me ask you this. There was um, some attachments that... Uh, when I was looking at some of your phone stuff today, although very limited, there's a, a man with a backpack. Um, he's got a beard. He does not look like Chris to me. In, in your photos. Do you know who I'm talking about? Yeah, is he like a little heavier set? Yeah, I'd say he's a little bit bigger. Yes, that is my friend Jim. That is the one that I was with on the 
Monday and Tuesday of last week. Okay. So there is some photographs. You mentioned the museum, the car museum. <clears throat> I think I remember seeing a couple photos of, of cars, and it didn't strike me as anything then. Um, so there may be a little bit more on your phone than what I think. Uh, but there is definitely no photos of Chris. And I don't remember seeing um, any pictures of the sand dunes. But So did you camp inside the national park there? No, it was outside. I think we camped at Zapata Falls. I think that's the name of the campsite. Yep, I think Zapata, it's Falls. Zapata Falls. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's Zapata before you come to the, you You turn off 160 and you're going towards the sand dunes and then you turn off and kind of go up a four-wheel drive road to Zapata Falls. Uh, yeah, that was like really gnarly one with all the switchbacks yep. and the rocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. there. And so we, we camped there. Um, was it like an established campground or was it just dry camping? No, it was an established campground. There's a campground up there. Like, you hang that left to go to the Powder Falls Trail, and then you go right, and there's, like, a big campground boat. Okay. <clears throat> so that's where you guys were there. <clears throat> yep. All right. Keep going. <laughs> and then um, we went to the sand dunes. Not the first day. So we got there uh, fairly late on... How did I do that? How did we get... No, 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 that's right. So I just, I need to think about this. I really need to think about this. So Saturday, we got there, we set up camp, and then after we set up camp, we went to the National Park. So you got, you went and hiked the, whatever, the, the sand dunes? Yeah, yeah, we tried, and I just remember it was super windy. Oh my God, the sand hurt so bad. I was, and then it was, it started raining. Um, and we stayed. We stayed even though the weather was bad because there was like nobody up there. Um, and so we did that for most of the afternoon. And then um, we came back to the campsite. And I showed him how to light a fire because he'd never done it before. Um, he'd never lit a fire? Lit a no, he's never been camping before. He told me he'd never been camping before. And I was oh. like, well, if you want to go, I'm trying to go to San Diego. So that's why we went. Done it. Okay. Um, so we, Did you guys visit any? Um, there's not really very much stuff around there. Uh, there's no restaurants or anything in that area. No. So. No, we did stop at the. I think it's called like the Oasis or something. Um, it's like this little. It's like on the way to the dunes. It's not in the park, but it's like on that road that you take to get to the dunes. And it's like, it's almost like a little gas station. And we stopped there and we rented a sandboard um, to go sandboarding on. And um, we got, I think we got more ice for the cooler, I think. And we got firewood. For so it's like a gas station? Kind of, but it's like the one-stop shop that everybody goes to because there's like nothing else around there. Right. Like you and I'm almost sure, I'm almost positive it's called the Oasis, and they actually have their own campground back there too. But okay, it's like I know on that road. Mm -hmm. It's right before you get to yeah. the entrance to the the park. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. On the right hand side when you're driving in. Um, I'm glad that you know what I'm talking about. Well, I worked uh, um, I worked in Southern Colorado for the last five years, and I spent a lot of time around Alamosa and in the San Luis Valley. Oh, so I know gotcha. I know a lot of about that area. Unfortunately. Um, so okay, I know what well, you're talking about. So, good. That helps me. So you, you got ice so, um, and uh, firewood? Yeah, and I, I'm not sure if we got ice. I think we did just because I like to re-up on ice who, every who time. Who paid I for camping. it? He did. Okay, did you think he used what? the debit or the um, gift card again? Probably, because that was the plan in the first place. He was just like, well, hey, I've got these gift cards. If you want to use them, you don't even have to spend any money, and we can just use these and i was like well that's great so i remember for the trip i filled up my gas tank and i paid for gas and i bought a little bit of groceries uh for the cooler and then um he took care of like the campsite and the board and the firewood and all of that okay like i didn't actually go into that oasis place i don't think i'm almost positive i didn't go in there he did i i got in line for the board i remember that but their, their, like, little board rental shop is, like, outside of the building. Okay. So he went inside because he went and got firewood. Um, and then we went, we went 
to the dunes. I'm just looking at your dates so you know you're right. The Banamere Speedway, the Mile High Nationals was July 21st. Yeah, so, and that's what I was going to say. Yep. Get online and see if that matches. Yep. It does. Okay, so, so, that, so we're good. all those other dates, all those other dates should be good. The only one that I'm not 100% sure about is the movie. It was that weekend, that okay. movie on the 6th and the 7th. It was that weekend. I just don't remember what day okay. of the weekend. I think I don't think it was a Sunday, though. I really think it was a Friday or a Saturday. Like, I'm almost positive I didn't have to work in the morning. All right. So what's after um, uh, the Great Sand Dunes? Okay, so we went to the, da- the dunes, and then um, we went and returned the board. And then we went back to the campsite, and we lit a fire, and we ate. And we just hung out by the fire for a few hours and just visited. And then it started raining really hard. So we put everything in the tent and put out the fire. And we went in the tent. And I remember he was, like, wide awake. And I was so tired. Like, oh, my God. I wanted to sleep so bad. And he just, like, would not sleep. And it was kind of bugging me. Like, I would, I think I would... I would, like, almost, like, wake up and, like, half subconsciously, like, have a conversation with him for a sec and then, like, doze back off. And I just remember being so tired and he was up probably for a while. Okay. And And, uh, so you guys come back to the Denver metro area on Sunday? Kind of. Yeah, but so we went... um, one of my friends wanted us to go to the Renaissance Festival, and she didn't know who I was with, but she was with, like, at the Renaissance Festival in Colorado Springs, and she was like, oh, you should stop by, and I made up an excuse to not go over there. I just told her, I was like, yeah, I don't really know, you know, and I, like, kind of got out of it because I didn't want her to meet him. I got it. What friend um, was that? Charlotte. Okay. So did Charlotte ever meet Chris? No, none of my friends ever met him. Okay. And then um, uh, on the way back up, we stopped in Colorado Springs to eat. And we stopped at a restaurant called BJ's. On Nevada and I-25? Uh, honestly, I don't know. I mean, I just remember... Right by the Col- University of Colorado, there's a bunch of buildings. Uh, and it's a big strip uh, center. There's like a Costco. Oh, wait. I think I remember the Costco. I think I remember the Costco. Because don't you kind of have to, like, you, like from the highway, you can, like, see... Yep. On the highway, but that main road, you can, like, see the Costco. And then you have to kind of, like, turn in and around into yep. that shopping center. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. BJ's, it's more like a um, brew house, I guess, kind of. Yes, yes, and it's like really nice, that place. It's just like, it's like a nice restaurant. I mean, not like nice, but it's just like, it's, it, yeah, it's, okay. it's a decent place. So that I mean, would have been... It's a big place, that's what I was looking yeah. for, it's a big restaurant. Sunday, yeah. July so, 29th? That, what, uh, what, what, what... Would, would, would it that have been Sunday, Sunday, July 29th? Yeah, it was Sunday, July 29th, and if you walk in the restaurant, so picture walking in, um, and the front doors are behind you, we were sat to the right on the, like, first level, like, there's, there's, like, a few different levels, so we were sat on the right side, and then in the right side, we were on the, like, left portion of the section on the right side. Like, there's these little, like, single-seater booths. They're okay. really small. Okay. So almost, like, in the center of the restaurant, almost, but just, like, kind of on the right section of the, the main floor. Okay. Okay. So did you pay, that, did he again pay with a gift card at that time? Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. And then we went home. Okay. Did you see him the following weekend? Uh, no, because he was out of town. Okay. Do you know where he went? He, yeah, he went to North Carolina. Do you remember the dates? Uh, no, I think, I think, uh, I want to say that he left on the 31st of July. 
I'm almost positive because we hung out the weekend prior at the sand dunes and then he went to work on Monday the 30th. I remember that. And then I think he left on Tuesday the 31st of July. I think. And I don't remember when he got home. <clears throat> okay. Next time you guys go out? Uh, it was that... Saturday, Saturday, uh, the 11th, and you guys, and that was the lazy, yeah, night. the story, yeah, okay, so we got that all down, what's next on your list, um, sorry, I was not, I forgot about all that stuff, and <laughs> I didn't, that's all right, I, so uh, we ran through something that I, I'm, you know, the first time we talked, you were really tired, the second time you were overly stressed, and you had thought of some very important stuff that you wanted to talk about. So it's fine. And it, I don't mind talking to you as many times as I have to talk to you to get everything down that could attend, you know, at some point be very important. It's fine. Understood. So just Understood. don't, don't worry about that. I, you know, my job is to talk to you and make sure that this stuff is, um, you know, placed in, in a, a report. So it, it's there forever. So it's, it's fine. Again, I I just keep telling you every time. You, you when you remember things, just call me and and we'll get it down. All right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I hope you guys pull cameras and all that because like I'm trying to help you. I'm like I'm really honestly disappointed that you guys don't have all my text messages or don't think that you do. Like it makes me sad. Like I really I want you guys to have them. Like you need them, and it's it's frustrating to me. But it's like I'll just. Tell you everything I know, and we'll go from there. That's right. Um, hold on. Uh, hold on. What else? Oh, okay. So now let's go to this last week. Okay. Um. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um. So, Monday, I think probably the most important conversation that I've had, I had with him after all of that took place was that first phone conversation on Monday night, like the later one. Remember I told you you were telling me there's two big ones? Right. And the first one was the one where he mentioned the sheets, the smelly sheets with his kids, and that was also the one where he was telling me he was going to go get his wife's wedding ring appraised. Um, that same conversation, he, I don't remember exactly how he phrased this. I, like, I don't remember like what led to this, but he told me um, something about like, he mentioned that he had told, I don't know what he said. He said something about the separation and how, like, she was okay with, with the fact that he wanted a separation or that, um, something like that. And I remember thinking to myself, like, wait a minute. Um, what? Oh, God, I don't, I'm, like, drawing a blank. It, here's the deal is, like, he had been telling me the whole time that I was, like, spending time with him that he was getting separated, getting separated. And he kept saying that he was the one who initially initiated the separation and then that it was more of a mutual thing. Like he said that he was the one who had initially brought it up, okay. uh, like before we had met. And then like she was on board with it where she was just like, I'm not happy either. Let's do this. Um, and then I, um, I remember telling you guys that when he was going to go to North Carolina, I kind of like backed away from the situation and I was like, hey, I think you should try to fix things with her because you have a really beautiful life with her and I think you should try to fix stuff. And he kept telling me like, you know, I don't want to, I don't think she wants to. And I was just like, please try, like just please try. Like I just thought he had such a beautiful life and, and you know, and I was willing to just leave like leave his life. I was like, if you work things out with your wife, I'm gone. And like, I, and, and that's fine, you know? And, and he'd always be like, well, what about us? And I'd be like, don't worry about us. Like try to fix stuff with her. And he said, okay, I will. And then when he went to North Carolina, 
he told me that he sat down and had a conversation with her and that he told her that he wanted to fix it. That is what he said to me. He told her that he wanted to fix it and she said no, that she still wanted the separation and that she was ready to file for divorce. So I was under the impression when he got home from North Carolina that the divorce was filed. That was what I was under the impression. And so then on Monday, when we were on that one phone call where he was just saying all sorts of weird stuff, he like, again, like, I don't remember exactly what was said, but it was something along the lines of like, um, she was okay with the fact that I wanted the separation. Right. And then I remember asking him, I was like, wait a minute, when you were in North Carolina, you told me that you tried to fix it with her and she was the one who said, that she didn't want to fix it. Okay. And he's like, no, I just, and then he goes, no, I just told her that I still wanted, you know, to continue with the separation. And I'm just thinking in my head, like, he lied to me, guys. He lied so much. It's, it's, okay. It's, so that just struck you as another lie? Yeah. So that one, I don't, well, it, it, yeah, well, and then now I'm seeing the news where he's telling everybody that he separated from her on, that he said he was, he told her he wanted a separation on the Monday that she went missing. And I'm just thinking in my head, like, he told me that he had already had that conversation with her before I was in, the, even in his life. Well, and so not to cause you any more stress, but so when you're talking to him on Monday, this is Monday, right? This isn't Sunday. This is Monday. No, this is Monday. So this is after the event. This is after the murders. Yes. He yes. he is telling you that he she mentioned uh, that it was oh, he, she was okay with the separation, although you know yes. now that um, that wasn't accurate. With those that, that was something different than he had previously told you, and certainly she couldn't have been really saying anything. Unfortunately, so. I mean, he's making he's making up stories after his wife is deceased. Jim, is that a fair yeah, statement? Well, is that I'm I'm kind of trying to follow where you're going. I I don't honestly. I, it just struck me as odd because I don't know if he was talking about the conversation they had had that day or okay. if he was talking about North Carolina. But either way, it just struck you it as was weird. A lie. It, it it struck me weird because he said that he was the one that was like pushing for it now and I was just thinking in the back of my head like he he made it sound like when I first got into his life that he was the one who had brought up the separation but that she was like super gung-ho about it like he made it sound like she was all on board with it and then when they were in North Carolina he's the one who said that he tried to fix it and she was, didn't want anything to do with it so it was weird to me when he was saying that he was the one that initiated the separation because I'm like wait a minute like and I think he, it was weird to me because I think he was referring to to either whatever happened on Monday morning or he was referring to whatever happened in North Carolina. And I was just really confused because I was like, well, at that point, I thought she was the one pushing you away. Like, not.